Great, so let us start. So again, I would like to welcome you to this global entrepreneurship class. Uh, this class is, uh, is offered in partnership, as you know, with Open Learning and Pausable. And now we are also partnering with the Ministry of Education Malaysia, which has a vested interest in creating entrepreneurial uh, graduates. As a matter of fact, uh, today with us, we have a representative from the ministry, and uh, that is uh, Datin Shahira. She is the head of the entrepreneurship unit. So I'd like you to really welcome her, make her feel really welcome. And Datin, would you like to say a few words to wh why are you here? What do you expect from the Malaysian uh, um, students? Thank you, Prof. And hi, everybody. I think you might be surprised why a bureaucrat is here to watching you. No, it's actually not to watch you. Actually, for, more for me to watch him. <laughs> because he asked me to become a partner in this. And in terms of MOOC learning, it's quite new to many of us. So we try to see whether... Uh, uh, we try to inculcate the entrepreneurial mindset and capabilities in all our young uh, graduates. So one of the way for us is like to see in what kind of platforms that we can do this. And Prof Mushta has bring up the ideas of trying to do it through MOOC. And why I'm here is actually to see how can MOOC be used as one of the platform for us to actually uh, try to uh, inculcate a spirit of enterprising spirit or entrepreneur spirits among you guys, the young people. So, Great. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> so, this is a topic that uh, there are many parties interested in. And uh, we will continue our, our uh, discussion about this uh, uh, today. So, today my outline would be I... Uh, I would like to talk about the inter entrepreneurship in, in general, again, you know, just to uh, connect to whatever we've spoke about earlier. I want to talk about CDIO and how does it connect to entrepreneurship. I want to talk about entrepreneurial thinking habits, the entrepreneurial language, risk taking and return on failure. And, um, and then I want to talk about uh, global entrepreneurship and, and crowdfunding. So these are the things that we are going to talk about uh, today. So entrepreneurship, what, who, why, and when. I think we touched on this and I would like to really uh, spend a few more minutes uh, talking about it. Uh, entrepreneurship is not only to have a business or to run a business or to make money. Entrepreneurship is a way, of, a way of life. Entrepreneurship is a frame of mind. So every individual who works in a different way to realize values that other people maybe did not even see, to create opportunities for him or herself as well as others can be seen as an entrepreneur. So a mother that runs the affairs of her family differently to ensure that her kids get fed well, get education, and, and progress well in life, despite the difficulties and the challenges, is an entrepreneurial person. A teacher who finds different way of teaching his or her student could be an entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurial uh, teacher. A student who finds value and, and find new ways go about, to go about him or her uh, going about their education could be an inter entrepreneurial student. And people like Steve Jobs are entrepreneurs, people like Tony Fernandez are entrepreneurs, and so on and so forth. So it includes, entrepreneur, in, uh, entrepreneurship includes that you run business and make profit and become you know, a very successful person, but it's not limited to that. As a matter of fact, now even well-established companies, when they um, employ engineers, uh, accountants, uh, uh, business graduates, they ask for people who have the entrepreneurial spirit, able to run things differently, able to identify value and opportunity where other people saw challenges and difficulties. 
So this is, this is the what and the who. The who is everyone. Any one of us could go about the way they are leading their lives in an entrepreneurial manner. Identifying new, uh, new challenges, converting them into opportunities and, and so forth, so forth. So on and so forth. Now, why entrepreneurship? The reason why we are teaching you entrepreneurship or business skills for engineers or whatever you want to call it, because for us to succeed in life, entrepreneurial spirit and entrepreneurial skills are becoming a prerequisite, are not just something that's good to have, but it's a very necessary thing to have. Now, from a government point of view, why they are interested in entrepreneurship? Because for a country to progress, for a country to have peace, for a country to have stability, everyone should have a job. And no government in the world is able to employ each and every citizen. So who is to generate jobs for everyone? It should be entrepreneurs, it should be successful people who have been able to to uh, spin off companies and businesses and things like that, or entrepreneurial people who work for existing businesses finding uh, new value, new economical value, and widening the, the, the cake so that everyone has a share uh, in that. And I personally believe, when I answer when, that the 21st century is the century of entrepreneurship. This is the century where anyone on earth can start up a business. This is the century where technology enables any one of us to accept credit card, any one of us to set an online business of some sort and sell things and, and, and get connected to the global commerce that's taking place and be part of that. So these are opportunities that my, my hope or my intention is to introduce you to and show you its potential and not necessarily every one of you will become an entrepreneur. We still need you know, the, the engineers who will just work for, to ensure that our, you know, our uh, uh, industry is running and, and, and so on and so forth. But at the same time, why not? If some of you end up being very successful entrepreneurs and employ, you know, 20 people or 30 people or 50 people or 1,000 people, then we will, instead of every one of us is looking for a job, then we'll start creating jobs and putting them back into the job market. And that's what we call uh, Mission Zero, if you recall my, my first lecture, where I hope we can reach a stage where we have a zero impact on the job market, where we, we, reach, an, we reach a stage where if we have 100 graduates graduating from, let's say, our school, and 95 of them go and compete for jobs, the remaining five will produce 100 jobs and put them back into the job market. This idea of creating jobs is really an entrepreneurial thing. And I, I would like to invite you and encourage you uh, to think in, in that way. Now, uh, who can tell me what CDIO is? Maybe, maybe you speak through the, the microphone, just for us to... So CDIO. Uh, conceive, design, implement, and operate. So conceive, design, implement, and operate. And that's exactly right. So CDIO provides a system approach to almost anything. We have been teaching you CDIO throughout as an engineering, an, uh, as a system approach to engineering. But actually CDIO is a system approach to entrepreneurship as well. So conceive is the moment an idea is born, it's about what happens in the brain. It's about the thought, the emotion, the desire, the urge. What happens in the mind? You want to make something. You want to do something. Now, that's the conceive. The design is when you start putting structure around that. So let's say I want to make this. I thought of a device that could control my computer. That's just a thought. It won't become a device on its own. The thought won't just convert into a physical product. It goes through what we call the design stage. 
in which I will say how big it will be, what kind of material I'll be using, how heavy, how light, how whatever, will, will it ha how many buttons will it have, will it have a battery in it, things like that. And eventually I need to implement it, I need to make it. Then eventually, after I manufacture it or build it or program it, if it's, if it's, a, if it's a software, then I will implement it, which is when the thing is available, implemented, then operate it when it's available for sale and I can sell it and I have the after sale services that comes with it. Now, if you think of anything that has ever came to life, you will find that it has been through the CDIO cycle. A movie has to start as a thought in someone's mind then, so that's conceiving, then someone has to start designing it or writing the script, then implementing it, which is when it's you know, being shot and, and the cast are selected and things like that, and eventually uh, operated when everything is complete and edited and it's in the cinema. So C, D, I, O. Uh, uh, a poem, someone has to think about it, someone has to write it, someone has to you know, print it and make it available as a book. Uh, a book, a novel, a computer, a joke, actually anything, this campus, someone has to have the idea first. So it's always conceive, then design, then implement, then operate. C, then D, then I, then O. And we as engineers and as entrepreneurs, we could come and contribute at different levels. But really when it comes to entrepreneurship, it's very necessary that we focus on the conceive stage because the conceive stage is very very important and that is the time where sometimes entrepreneurs are you know sort of be ahead of the rest of us they are able to conceive things that maybe the rest are yet to be able to be aware of so since conceiving is something that happens in the brain. So I wanted to actually spend some time talking about the brain, okay? So conceiving is something that starts in the brain. So let's talk um, about the brain a bit. Now, have you seen a brain? No. So this is a model of a brain. Okay, so it looks like, like that. So if I take a cross section in the brain, the brain has three major parts. This part here, the lower part, so this is the part that goes into the spinal cord. This part here is called the old brain. And also is called the reptilian brain. And the reason for this, because this is the same structure, the same brain structure that we have uh, we have in the humans, we have in the apes, but we all but the reptiles have only that part. So a reptile, a lizard, has only that part to control it. So that's why it's called the reptilian brain or the old brain. So come closer to you guys to see it. So this part here is called the old brain. Okay? The lower part. The second part is called the middle brain. So you have the lower, the, the old brain here. The layer on top of it is called the, the middle brain. Now interestingly, the old brain is where our basic instinct is stored. So this is the part of the brain that if your life is threatened, it will take over. So if there is an explosive device here and you hear it ticking, 
This part, the old brain, the reptilian brain, will just take over. You will just forget about your computer, you'll forget about me, and run for your life. <coughs> so this is the part that we call the old brain. Now the middle brain is the part where emotions are processed. And this is a part that humans has, but also the higher apes have. And uh, uh, animals like elephants and dolphins and so on. The, this part is, is uh, developed into them at variety of levels. Now interestingly, the last part, which is called the new brain or the ne neocortex is the outside level of the brain is something only humans have. And this is where we do high level thinking and where we do language. And that's why the only creature that can talk is uh, are, are humans. Only humans are capable of, 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 of thinking. Uh, sorry, of, uh, to of talking. So speech is processed at the the neocortex or the new brain. So we have literally three brains, the old brain, the middle brain, and the new brain. The old brain is where we have all our basic instinct stored there. The middle brain has the emotions processed there, and the outer brain is the higher level thinking and language uh, processed there. How, how do we know this? Uh, uh, there is a lot of medical uh, evidence. So a, a person, when they are uh, um, affected in the neocortex, then that will affect their ability to, to, to talk. The speech part is, is, is affected and, and things like that. Not to mention that there is a lot of uh, what we call fMRI, functional MRI, where they could take an individual and they put them into the machine and they see when you are, when you are processing some emotions, uh, which part of the brain lit. So this is actually quite well uh, established now. For you not to uh, forget this, I just want uh, the three volunteers, maybe Vivian and you and you come here. Just uh, let's, let's show how the, uh, how the um, brain parts are, 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 are formed. So Vivian, come. I want you to form the old brain for me, it's like that, come, 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 yeah. like that. So imagine that this is, you, you raise it like this. So this would be the spinal cord, and this is the old brain. Literally, it's almost a part of the spinal cord. And this is, what, what we call this? The old brain. So every time, and what does it, what does it control? The basic instinct, the fight, or flight. You know, if someone like comes in to attack you, if he, he or she is too strong, you will run away, or if you wanna fight, you'll fight there. So this is the old brain. So in, every time you wanna remember the old brain, you remember her, okay? So now, I want you to put your hand just like that on top of her hand. Okay, yes. Yeah, you can touch her, it's okay. Okay, okay, you feel it? Yeah. Okay. So, so he, this part represents the middle brain. And middle brain processes what? Emotions. So he, when you think of emotions, you think of him. Okay. So this guy always thinks. Okay, so this is on top. So you imagine now the, the structure is really different. This is when you cut, you see a different in... In, in the type of the brain. So, uh, Vivian, you, you, you make, this, make this vertical for me, please. Yes. Yeah. So you just imagine that this is the spinal cord, the old brain is part of it, the middle brain, and the new brain. So this is how, um, unfortunately, I cannot cut their hands because legally this is not allowed, but yeah, you just imagine that the hands doesn't exist and that's the structure, okay? So this is how, it's just like an ice cream, three scoops of ice cream are there. Thank you very much, thanks a lot. So, so this, is, this, is, this is how the brain is structured. Now, I just want you, I just want you 
to think of this as a team work. So this is not like, oh, I think mm, I'm now emotional. It's my middle brain that is, uh, that is working. Or, oh, now I am uh, thinking is only the, the, the neocortex. The, everything that happened, every part of the brain is somehow involved in, 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 working, in working on it. But there are certain times where one particular part of the brain is engaged more than another part. So for example, if you have a mathematical equation that you are working on and you're really thinking, most likely if we put you in a machine, we will see your new brain being lit. If you are uh, angry and emotional, maybe what is taking control is the emotional brain or maybe the old brain. Now, why this is important for us? Because it literally brings challenges and, and also brings opportunities. So the way the brain is structured brings opportunities for people who want to sell. So marketeers, every marketing message, every successful marketing message will speak to the middle brain and the old brain. Because, let me, let me ask you this question. If, if, you, if, you, if you go to buy something, so let's say I wanna, you wanna sell me this pen, and then uh, I wanna buy this pen, how much? You just give me a number. 40 ringgit. 40 ringgit. And you, you are eager to sell to me. Let's say you are eager to sell to me. Uh, uh, maybe you can give him the, let's, let's just play this. So, so, so you, you stick to the 40 ringgit or, and, and you are eager to sell it to me. So how, how much is this pen? Uh, actually, I got it as a gift. I don't know. Never mind, just, just let's play so as a game. So let's say you want to sell it. I, 40 ringgit? 40 ringgit. Mm. If, if I don't want to buy, what will I tell him? Normally, if I don't want to buy. Do you really say I don't like it? I'll be back. And uh, what I'm doing while I'll be back? Uh, getting away. No, no. So, so, so what will I say? I'll, I'll just say, I'll be back? No, I'll get back to you. Yeah, and I, I will think about it. When you say, I'll think about it, most likely you will not be buying, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Because, because if I want to buy it, you won't think about wow, it. I won't think about it. This is really good, man. This is nice. Yeah, can, 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 you, can you reduce the price for me? And then you see, so when I am like this, Wow, this is, which part of my brain you think is engaged? Uh, the wow, middle the middle brain. Very correct, very correct. So if you want to sell things to me, and I am, wow, can, can, can I try it? Yeah, sure. Wow, wow, so smooth, very nice. So you, you see, when I want to buy, I would say, what? I like it. And liking and loving is an emotion. Yeah. But when I don't want to buy it, what will I say? Let me think about it. Yeah, Let me think about it. That's the, the new brain is, is telling me. You know what the new brain is saying? Come on, you have so many pens, right? Ah, nah. So, so that's why every marketing message speaks to the middle brain and maybe even the old brain. So they will say things like, you'll love it. Make you look great. Imagine yourself having that vacation, imagine yourself having that great time. No one comes to you and say, take this vacation and that will increase your productivity and then your salary will increase because the moment you go to that direction, which part of the brain you are engaging? Brain. You are engaging the new brain. So the marketeers will really want to engage your old brain and middle brain. But we as Budding entrepreneurs, we want to engage the new brain so that we train the rest of our brain to do certain things that I'm going to talk about. So that's very, very important for us to understand that the brain has these, um, these three, uh, three parts. So the question now is, can we learn to be entrepreneurs? Can we learn entrepreneurship? And I want you, before we answer this question, to take a piece of paper and a pen and with your non-dominant hand, so if you are right-handed, use your left hand. If you're left-handed, use your right hand. If you can use them both, I leave it to you. And 
I would like you to please write something like I love Taylor's with the hand that you are not so good at using. Yeah. yeah. Just play along, you try. Yes, Arthur. You can write I love Mushtaq also, it's okay. No, no, it's okay. I can't even hold it. You cannot even hold the pen? Come on, you are at the university now. This hand doesn't work. Right. Okay. Let's see whether it works or not. Okay, for those who have, have been trying, can 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 you can you tell me was it easy or difficult, Arthur? Well it certainly wasn't easy. Certainly wasn't easy. And the result was it? I'd rather you not look. Right. Right. So what does it what does it remind you with? Does it remind you with a certain period of your life? Does it look like the way children write? When you, when you start, yes, yeah. So, so, so the reason why I ask you to do this, any, anyone else who have done, yeah, who, have, who, who thinks that this looks like the way he used to write when they were kids? Yeah. What do you think? Huh? So this is the le this is left, this is right, yeah. right. And which one is nicer? You think? Right. The right is nicer. Okay. Now, now, now le le let us talk a little bit about what the exercise that we w w that we have done. So, literally, the knowledge of the letters supposed to be up there, but somehow there is one hand that is better than doing it than compared to the other hand. And there is a reason for this. Now, if I show you a picture of the nervous system, the nervous system basic building block is what? A neuron. So the neuron is the cell that makes the nervous system. And when you start writing, I love Taylor's, literally what's happening in your brain is the brain is instructing through the different brain parts to the hand to write in a certain way. But because that hand has not been trained, we will say my right hand is better than the left hand. But let me tell you one thing, it actually has nothing to do with the hand. It's all in the brain. And the brain, when we send an instruction from, from it to any other parts of, of, of our body, there are some pathways within our, uh, our brain before the signal can go to that part of the body. And the brain itself will have, or the neurons will have a, a, a network, a messy network. Could I just borrow this cable from you, if you don't mind? Yeah. Anyone has more cables to give me? No, you don't have. I, I, I give back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I want you, I want you to imagine the, the brain as this network of, of, of cables. And every instruction is an electric signal. Now, one thing about the neurons, they are not insulated like this cable. They are literally exposed. So the, when a message comes from this part, to go to this part, let's say, so that it goes to the right hand, or from this part to this part, so it goes to the left hand, the signal has to go through all these neurons or cables, and as it goes through, it gets weaker. Okay? Now, an interesting thing that happens, the more you send a signal in a certain direction, there is a material that's called myelin. And that material keeps on forming around the pathway through which the signal has moved. And as the myelin forms, the 
that leaky pathway of the signal becomes something like a fiber optic. So it becomes stronger, it becomes better. So the, everything that we are capable of doing is through the building of myelin because the brain on its own without, without myelin will never be able to do anything. Now, if you look at the human babies when they are born, they are actually capable of what? Crying, Swimming. suckling, yeah? Swimming. What? Swimming. Swimming, yeah. right. You, 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 when you were born, you were swimming. No. <laughs> Till now I don't know. Right. Till now you don't know. So how come you were, when you were born, you know how to swim and now you forgot about it? I have no idea. We have the lake. We can try. <laughs> yeah. So, so if you compare, if you compare the, the, uh, the human babies to, let's say, the, um, uh, the, uh, the horse baby or the, uh, uh, or the goat, these newborns, when they are born, they are able to stand. After a short period, they are able to you know, walk. And, and the reason is because they, were, they are born with these pathways with built-in myelin already. For the humans, we have very little myelin. So we can maybe suckle, cry, you know, very few things that we can do. So the humans are born with little myelin, but with huge potential to build myelin through the way we would like to train ourselves so we could we we are unable to walk for i don't know a year plus or maybe even more than that but later we can walk we can run we can dance we can jump we can teach ourselves almost anything that we want to do now have you seen a real human brain no? Oh. Do you want to see a human brain? Who want to who see a human brain? Raise your hand. So this is a real human brain. Yes. It's a real human brain. You want to hold it? Pass it around. Maybe, maybe give to our guests first. <laughs> this is for yeah. It's heavy. I want, you, I want you to feel its weight. This is actually where, this is the most powerful uh, thinking machine, computing machine in the universe. Until today, we know very little on how this device works. But there is a reason why, yeah, you could pass it, you could pass it around. There's a reason why I brought this here, because really what we are trying to do is to train our brains so that we have some thinking habits to think like successful people, like entrepreneurs. Okay? So let me, let me show you a video. So, so the way I see this part of the movie is the coach was asking the student to repeat a certain technique a number of times. And through that repetitive kind of approach, he is helping him build myelin around certain pathways in the brain to create that capacity. My promise to you is we can learn entrepreneurship in exactly the same way. Everything that we want to do has a technique. And if you are willing to learn the technique, then you will be able to do whatever you want to do. The key thing is, do you want to do it? So that's really the, the key message here. Let me just turn on the lights and I come and continue. Okay, as will do it. So, if you ask me about a formula for success, I will say we will need to build myelin for success. Because I think you have to agree with me, the brain is still here? Didn't reach back? 
Oh, it came back already. OK. So, so if you think of the brain, all the potential that we have in, in, in our work, in our study, is actually resides there. And this is the part of the body that we could invest more in terms of developing it, improving its memory, improving its thinking, the quality of thought that it can come up with, and, and, and things like that. So the, the formula that I would like to give you, and I really would invite you to, to listen to this, because I'm not sure that there's, you, will, you will hear this anywhere else. I think everything will start with interest. You really need to find your inner calling, the thing that you are interested in, whether it's for the study that you want to do, or if you want to go into entrepreneurship, what kind of business you want to be in, it has to be something that you are interested in. And, 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 and this has happened through answering things like, why do I exist? What is my inner calling? Why I'm here? What is the thing that won't happen in the world if I was not here? This is something that is not an easy thing, but it's worth pursuing. And often, you know, when, when you are talking about, I want to do something from an entrepreneurial point of view, uh, when I ask you to have a project, when you have a difficulty deciding what project you want to do, this is actually an, an opportunity for you to, you know, to think of what really interests me, what are the things that are very close to my heart. Now, once you know what interests you, you need the technique. Because even if you are interested in singing or in music, there are right ways to do it, and there are millions of wrong ways to do it. You could be interested in swimming, you really want to swim, but there are wrong ways to swim, and there are right ways to, to swim. You know, just like you, I also taught myself swimming at a very later age. And until now, I swim in a very inefficient way. So I could like swim very short distances. Now, the issue with myelin is, once you build it, it's not easy to unbuild. So, and, and, and myelin is how habits are formed. So when, once you have a habit, you cannot just turn it off. That, this is a physical material that's built in your brain. So now, the existing wrong technique of swimming is actually preventing me from improving my swimming. So if I, if I did not know how to swim, I would have been better off if I actually engage a coach. It would be easier for me maybe to swim in the right way. So the technique is there. Now, the technique from, from our uh, uh, entrepreneurial point of view, we'll be talking about the CDIO, we'll be talking about return on failure and how to encourage you to take risk and calculated risk and things like that. The other part, which is very important is coaching. So besides the technique, so it's not just, it's not enough to say, this is the technique, go and learn it. You will need a coach. You will need someone who watches you and tells you this is right and this is wrong and this is the part that you, you could improve on and things like that. And this is the role that your lecturers, maybe myself, uh, your parents, whoever is working with you, you, your mentor, if you have a mentor, will play that role for you. So once you have the interest, once there is an existing technique, and once you have someone who is familiar with that technique, then you need commitment. So you have the interest, you have the technique, you have the coaching, you have the commitment to practice, the commitment to do. Because sometimes you know it's doable, you know that there's a technique, there is also a coach, but you don't go. Or you are not committed to try, or you are not committed to come on time, and things like that. Then that, the la lack of commitment will actually not be, be helpful to you. The commitment traits are self-management. Do you manage yourself? And are you interested in pushing the limit? Do you push the limit? Do you keep on increasing the limits of what is in existence today. So that's the thing that you need to do, right? Do you agree with me? Yes. What did I say? You say that uh, just have you, you need to pursue it to your interest, 
but you need to learn the technique and the people who coach you. Yes. Then you need to pay some, do some commitment before you can actually acquire the entrepreneurship abilities. I see. Okay, good. Thank you. So with all this, we will have a success mindset. That's the mindset that when we have it, we can succeed in our studies, in our entrepreneurial undertaking, in almost anything um, that uh, we intend to do. So interest plus technique and coaching plus commitment will give you the mindset. So if you notice, I've shaded these because these, are, these are, could be things that are external to you, but the interest has to be yours. I cannot enforce an interest on you. If you are not interested in listening to me, I cannot force you to listen to me. It's very difficult. You could even be here, but your mind could be somewhere, somewhere else. And also the commitment is something that has to come uh, from you. Once you achieve that, then the success mindset is something that you have installed in your brain and it's for you uh, for life. So CDIO, I would like to just go again through it because it's, it is both the, the technique and the coaching that we are going to use. So it's a system approach for entrepreneurship and it it helps you myelinate your brain. It helps you through repeating the exercise, through doing it again and again and again to have that. So you will need to conceive, as we said. So this is just a design, then you implement, and then you operate. So everything that you see, now you should view it from, how was this conceived? Who conceived it? Who designed it? How did they design it? Can I design it better? Who implemented it? Can I implement it better? How is it operated? Can, I, can, I get, can, it get, can it be operated in a better way? So this is the part that I, uh, I have about the brain. Do you have any question thus far? OK. So let me move on then. What do you see here? Cute little girl, Cute little girl. sees something that she hasn't seen before. For those of you who have observed children, and let's say they find this object, what will they do? They will, they will, yes, they will take it. And meanwhile, they are not silent. They will be uttering some words. And they will be, the first thing is to put it in their mouth. Now, there is a reason for this. And it's actually a very telling reason in the way the brain works. So the first thing is the child will be uttering some words. And these words, literally, they are in their mind. They are giving this, this object a name. I really want you to pay attention for what I'm going to say now. You will never be able to think about anything until you give it a name. And I'm going to give you an exercise right now. Okay, um, could you please stand here? Okay. Who knows her name? Just raise your hand. Who knows her name? Just raise your hand. Know her name. OK, OK. Now, now, this is a very interesting exercise. Very interesting exercise. When you think of her in your brain, in your mind, what did you name her? So you name her that in. Okay, good, 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 good. Very good, very good. What else? What else? You, you've given her names in your mind because, the, yes? A member of the government. So the, the lady from the government, yes. What else, did you know, what else did you name her? The? 
Okay, so, so just give him, can you repeat this? The Ministry of Education, yes, yes. No, he's... Uh, Ministry of yeah. Education. So you, yes, you just say it so for the reporting. Ministry of Education. What else different from government ministry? I'm sure you've given her other names. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. What else? The guest. The guest, yes. Now, I think, who, are, you've given her other names. You tell me. Anyone? Say the lady with the scarf. So, thank you very much. Now, there is, sorry? They don't need to bite you, no. Maybe they won, I don't know. Depends, depends, I think, on what happens later. You see, this is a part of uh, corporate training that I deliver. And often, before I, we sell the training, the people will say, okay, send this engineer, I want to listen to him. So I give you an example. When I explain this, so I go and exchange cards, and I know these people have forgotten my name as a vice president of a bank, for example. So I look at him and I say, okay, without looking into my card, look at me, tell me what's my name. <laughs> and he forgotten. And I say, okay, now you tell me, in your mind, what did you call me? And they call me the tall guy, the foreigner, the guy with the mustache, these are all names that are very necessary because without the name, the brain won't work. And that's why when we have an object or something that we don't have a name for it, what do we call it? The thing? The round thing? The, 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 the thing that you use for, it has to have a name, otherwise, without a name, we won't be able to talk about it, and we won't be able to think about it. Now, before we discover bacteria and germs, they did not have a name, and we operated as if they don't exist. Doctors did not even wash their hands after the operation, because they didn't know there is something like germs. Now, interestingly, there are things that did not, does not exist but they had a name, and because they had the name, there are books written about them. So I don't know whether ghost exists or not, but because there is a name for it, we actually, we treat it as, or some of us at least, as if it existed, even though you, you didn't have a way to measure it or to specifically ensure that you find it, you, you have it in existence. Now there's a reason why I'm telling you this, because after we name something, often, often, we, say whether this is good, bad, threatening, or I don't care. So for example, when she comes, if I say this is a person from the Ministry of Education and she's going to assess whether you will graduate or not, I think that's gonna be a totally different feeling within you. To, but maybe some of you didn't really care, maybe some of you thought, oh, what's happening? Uh, when the child bites this object, if the object was hot or bitter, what will happen? The baby can cry. And, and maybe the baby decide not to touch this object again. Now, I want you to just remember when we talked about the brain. And the brain has a part that is connected with the language. Did you recall that? So the new brain processes language. Then the baby decide what to do with it, which is a feeling. This is good, this is bad, this is hot. And eventually there is an action and could be like just to throw it away if this is something that the baby feel it is bad. Now, this is a thinking model. This is one of the theories how thinking happen. So every time we are encountering a new person, a new thing, a new phenomena, often we want to give it a name. And then we would like to know, how would this impact me? So is this good for me? Is this bad for me? Is this something that's going to affect me or not? And based on that, we will react. Now why this is, we, I will call this naming, classifying, and finally, rewiring. Naming, 
classifying and rewiring. And there's a very important reason why I want you to, uh, to learn this. And there's a very important reason why I think this is very important for entrepreneurs. So it's naming, classifying, rewiring. Naming, classifying, rewiring. So let's now have an exercise. And please pay attention and play along. And uh, we will may need uh, the mic to go through. OK, look at this. What is this? What is this? Cockroach. OK. What do you think of it? One word. Arthur? Yeah, you raise your hand, and then what do you think of it? Um, it's a One pest. word. Pest, yes. Any other? Um, it's a pest. Pest, yes. Any other? Well, you've been through this exercise before. Yes. <laughs> Survivor. Survivor, OK. Uh, what, what do you think of maybe our guest? Yeah. So I think you've been this exercise as well, right? No. OK. So we have past. We have survivor. That's in. What do you think? When you see this, what do you think? Dirty. Dirty. So past, dirty. What do you think? Um, Just what do you think? Yes? Nuclear bomb survivor. Nuclear bomb survivor again. Yes. OK. Ugly. Ugly. Dirty. Dirty. Irritating. Irritating. Disgusting. Disgusting. Dirty. Dirty. Insect. Insect. Gross. Gross. Enemy. Enemy. Speechless. Awesome. Speechless. Great. Okay. No, okay. No. Okay. Speechless. We have a speechless person here. Awesome. Okay. Great. Now, now, when you think, majority of us thought of it as a pest, irritating, dirty, disgusting enemy. What What should you do with it? My God. So, destroy it. Now, if you notice here, we we gave it a name. We say what we think of it, and then that led an action. Now, let me talk about problems and opportunities and, 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 and challenges. And then I'll go back to the cockroach story. You know, a couple of years ago, in a staff meeting that we have at our school, and some of you maybe have heard this story before, uh, we were uh, discussing uh, about our school, our students. And when you ask people, so how is thing? the semester has started? Oh, big problem. Why? Students never come on time. These guys are useless. You know, they don't appreciate education. OK, what about you? Oh, I have a problem. You know, the timetable. They put me a class at 8 o'clock, the other class at 5 o'clock, and I have to stay for the whole day. And they don't know I, I have to pick the kids from. OK, so what about you? You know, I have a big problem because the lab is, okay, what about you? Problem, the machine that we, in the lab is not working. And everyone is repeating this word, I have a problem. I have a problem. So I, I thought to myself, maybe this is something that I need to do something about. So I, I said, if we were to outlaw the word problem, and ev if we make it a point, everyone utters the word, this is staff meeting, you pay five ringgit. What will happen? So the people revolted. They say there will, there will be no way that we will stop, uh, you know, we will pay that, that, that amount of money. So eventually, after some negotiation, we agreed that everyone utters the P word, will pay one ringgit. We appointed one of our colleagues to be the opportunity fund manager. So if you utter the P word, or someone saw you uttering the P word, you will need to go and pay uh, that lady one ringgit. And the promise was, I'm going to double the amount of money at the end of the year, and we go all together and do something with it. So 
uh, I thought I actually could control the way I speak. And I was mistaken because by the end of that meeting, I was firing it poorer. And I realized it's actually easier said than done. However, we carried on. And by the end of the year, we had around 350 ringgit. So we doubled that and we went and have, had a very, very good dinner. Now, I thought this was a very interesting idea. And one day, um, the, our uh, training department say that there's this company that wants a um, problem-solving course. And they wanted me to do it. Say, so, okay, I thought if I were to um, introduce that concept of them, of removing the P word from their dictionary, changing it with either opportunity or a challenge, it would be very useful. But I was a bit apprehensive because these are my clients. So if they refuse to pay money, then the whole thing will collapse. So what I did, I commissioned the design of my own dollar. So this is called one opportunity. And this is, um, so what I did, I had an agreement with them and I say, okay, I'm going to, these are the people that I'm training from an energy company. So I say, look, if I give you at the beginning of the training, three of this, I give it to you. And if you utter the P word once, I collect one. I also appointed one of the colleagues as the, uh, the fund manager. If you utter it twice, I'll take the other one. If you utter it three times, I'll take the third one. But if you do it the fourth time, you have to pay one ringgit. They say, let's do it. Because they thought they will keep all my notes with them. Now the training starts at 9 a.m. By 11.30, I've gotten all my notes back. And I started collecting real money. Because the challenge is, the language that you use, you, cannot, you don't really control it until you get the new brain to be aware of what is going through your mind. And this is not an easy task. So some of them uh, wanted to keep it, so they actually paid real money to keep it. And for, for your information, it actually cost us one ringgit and 15 cents to print this. So it's actually worth, I mean cost, not worth, cost more than one ringgit. So since then, I started to give this to everyone who attended my class, provided that they do a pledge. So I'll give you the opportunity to do the same if you are willing to do the pledge uh, with me. Now, why we don't like the P word? It's very simple because Solving a P is in a way a destination. You know, I want to just do it, or I want to kill this cockroach, or I, I want to just like end it here. While if I see this as an opportunity, realizing the opportunity is a journey rather than just the destination. Sorry. So this is the banknote I spoke about. Now, if you, if you agree to pledge that from now on, you will not use the PM. So this is actually between the P and the M, there are five letters. There's R, O, B, L, E. M. So I, we call it the P word or the P5M. If you agree not, if you pledge not to use it, not to use this word from now on and replace it with either opportunity or a challenge and describe everything that happens in your life in the most positive way that you can, then I'm going to give you one of these. Not only that, if you are interested, at the end of the course, I'm going to sign it personally for you. Now, for your information, some of my online students from all over the world requested that I do this to them, and I actually signed copies for them, and I posted. 
So I've sent it to Europe, to Australia, to South America, you name it. If you want it, you'll get it, provided that you pledge. So who would like to join the pledge? So that's what would you like to, would you would like, would you join this movement? Not to use the P words anymore, and I think that will watch you for me. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Do you want to, it, it's a choice. I don't want to force you if you think, look, P5Ms are a very important part of my life, and I want to keep them, the choice is yours. Would you like to have this? Would you like to have it? Would you like to have one? 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 You're most welcome. Would you like to have one? Would you like to have one? Would you like to have one? One question. Yes, question. So uh, sorry, I, I, we need the mic. so Because <laughs> Arthur always comes up with very interesting questions. And I think no, 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 it's no, unfair no, no, to no, the no, online no. students not to give them the opportunity. Yes, question. So if I use the P word yes. and I give it back to you, if I use it again, I won't have any more of that. What do I do? Look, my thinking is the pledge is to yourself. Yes, yes, I know. But I, let's I, see, let's yeah. see. No, do you want to try at least? I suppose it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> okay. You don't want it. Okay. Would you like to try it? Would you like to try it? Jeff, you raise your hand from the very beginning, so I'll give that to you. Would you like to have one? Yeah. Would you like to have one? 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 What about you? Would you like to have one? You're most welcome. So would you like to join the pledge? Would you like to join the pledge? Yeah. I, I really would like you to take it seriously, and I really appreciate those who say, I don't want, because you guys have a choice. Would you like to? Yes. Sure. Would you like to join the club? Sure. Would you like to? Wonderful. Okay. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. He said, can I have one? Would you like to have one? Would you like to have one? So would you like to join and pledge not to use the P word? Would you like to stop using the P word? Would you like to stop using the P word? Would you like to stop using the P word? Would you like to stop using the P word? Would you like to stop using the P word? Just one question. Uh, there's a question. Uh, sorry. No, because we need to record this. Just one question. Yes. The, the P word, right? Is it only in English or? In any, P word in any language. In Arabic, in Malay, in, in Mandarin, in Cantonese. Yes. You need to remove it from your life entirely. Do you want to do it? Yes. Would you like to do it? Would you like to join the pledge? Would you like to join the club? Would you like to join us? Okay. Would you like to join us? Would you like to do? Would you like to do it? Great. Thank you very much. Now, now for those for those who opted for those who opted for those who opted not to remove the p words from their life, I still have the notes. And you can always come and ask me for the note. So I want you to describe everything as, a, as an opportunity or as a challenge. You just, you just, you just try it and, and you be ready to see some magical things happening. Before this, before this, let's try the exercise again. So, if, you, if I say, what is this? Now, although this creature is called cockroach, but the word cockroach has so many negative connotations, we need to find a different name first. So it has to be named positively. So the, the thing that I've chosen is this, which is Blatella asahinai, which is its scientific name. Now, if I say cockroach, you feel like something in, but if I say Blatilla Asahinai, you don't really have, there's nothing there associated with it. So straight away, we have 
removed the first negative uh, connotation. Now, what do you think of it? Now, I want you to, a few of you to, to tell me what do you think of it in using positive words. So I want a few of you, raise your hand and the mic will be with you. Just, just describe it like, in like, like the same way, like survivor, or even better. Anyone can try? Now you people have taken my notes already just now. Now you don't want to participate? <laughs> yeah, so, so when you look at this, what do you think of? Let me help you. What color it is? So brown, brown is, a color, is something to describe it. What else you can describe it with? The fighter. What? The fighter. The fighter. Yes. Yes? Uh, so if you look at the, yes? It's clean, clean, okay. Maybe here, would you like to try? So you see this, what do you, what do you think? You, you wanna tell me something positive or at least neutral? Uh, cute. Cute, very good, so you think cute, cute, cute. Yes, 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 good. Uh. Pet, pet, yes. Four legs. How many legs does it have? Uh, six, I don't know, six. Six legs. Six legs. So, I have only two. You have only two and he has six legs. <laughs> He's three times better than you. Very good. Very good. Yes. What, what, what do you think that is a very positive word for this? Very quick. Very quick. So these are things that actually you could say flyer, resilient, brown, brown antenna, six-legged, wing, protein, survivor. Now, I've done this exercise tens of times. And I heard people say, roommate. <laughs> yeah. That was really my favorite. Yeah, that, was, that, that lady worked for a bank. So, so now, I really would like you, I really would like you to think with me. When you think of it as cute, clean, quick, do you really think that you want to kill it? Is it like the same sense of wanting to kill it? What can we do with it? Now, this is the time where people thought of it as some sort of food. They thought of it because it lives in the sewage. It could maybe, uh, we could attach uh, a sensor to it and then we could measure the health of our sewage system. There are so many things that we could do with it besides killing it. Now, if we wanna kill it, we have been killing this creature for ages. Did we manage to get rid of it? We don't, we don't. Maybe it's time to work with it. So this is, this is the, the, the exercise that, that I would like you to, to have in mind. So remember that thinking model starts with naming, classifying, and eventually the rewiring part. Now, <clears throat> Arthur, I'm picking on you today. Can you, can you come and help me to describe this? Come, come here, give him a big hand. Okay, so Arthur, you, you, you take this, and, and I want you, yeah, you face the class. Okay, so I want you to imagine, do you drive? Uh, yes. Okay, so I want you to imagine that you're driving on the highway. All right. Then you ha your car breaks down. Okay. So the car now breaks down and either breaks down or you have a tire puncture, whatever you want to say. Okay? okay. So imagine that. Imagine it. Put yeah. yourself in that position. Yeah, I mean, I have been in that position. No, I want you to re, re, re-enact this position. Your, your mind have the feeling. Now I want you to say, to describe this position without using the P word, using actually the word opportunity and describe it to them. Um. It's a good opportunity to learn how the car works by examining the parts that break down or by actually learning how to change your tire if you haven't changed it before. So, so, so he actually jumped one step to, I, I was thinking, I say, I had an opportunity, my car broke down. Oh. And then, and then so, so, so that's what you are trying to, to say, right? And you yeah. think it's an opportunity for you to learn how the car works. Yes. Okay. Anyone else thinks of another thing that is an opportunity for Arthur when his car breaks down? 
and, and just help him. So he has a great opportunity, the car broke down. So this is an opportunity for? Learning how to control the car. Learning how to control the car, yes. <laughs> you still cannot see the opportunity there. No opportunity. Vivian? Start reading the car manual because I don't know how to change a tire. Right. So maybe I should start looking back at the manual to so start to right. learn how to yeah, right. change it. Right. So start reading the manual. Anyone else? That, what do you think? So opportunity for him for what? To know his car weakness. Right. So he knows the car. So now about learning about the car and so on. Anything else Bes beside the car? What do you think? Opportunity to find the roommate, the cockroach inside there. So, opportunity to find the roommate, okay. <laughs> opportunity to know the guy who can fix the car. Okay, so this is an opportunity to know who can fix the car and maybe it becomes your friend. Okay, or someone who can actually stop and help you. Okay, anyone else want to try? Please? Yeah. Okay, please listen. Uh, discovering the reliability of toll services. Discovering the reliability of, of toll services. Now, just to share with you, you guys just took my opportunity note and you didn't really play along. So people, when I give that example, people say it's an opportunity to know who my real friends are. I just said it. Yeah, so, so, so I, when I call, will they come? An opportunity for me not to go to the class because I have an excuse. An opportunity for me to ask my parents to buy me a new car because this car is not serving me well. And so on, so forth, so forth. Now, look, the car has broke down. You want to feel miserable about it? Choice is yours. You want to see this as an opportunity? The choice is yours. An entrepreneur would say, wow, how many other people got the car broke down? Could I come up with a service to benefit from this? And in the process, I make other people's life easy. And someone would say, oh, I'm miserable. Why me? I'm the unluckiest person on earth. And he could end up having a fight or another accident. And so the choice is yours. Thank you very much, Arthur. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. So that's, that's actually what I'm trying to say. If the thinking process is naming, classifying, and eventually rewiring, we could interrupt the process at the naming stage. So when I name the event positively, I could influence the outcome in a very positive way. Hence, this is a requirement. We know now how the brain works. Let's see how we rewire it. And our brains are wired to detect negative things. So if there is, if the aircon stops working, if there is some bad smell, if you have toothache, no one needs to remind you. You will know this right away and you will feel it right away and you will act upon it right away. But the fact that you have food on the table, the fact that the light is working, the fact that we are here, the fact that you have uh, enough money to pay for your tuition fees, the fact that you had a car in the first place, all these things become part of the background. We take them for granted. Now that is human nature. That is human nature. And the exercise of brain rewiring is, I want you, on open learning, which is I'm going to open very soon, to report five things that you are grateful for every day. And you will say, five things? I don't have five things that are, I'm grateful for. I want you to think, are you grateful to the fact that you have your health? Are you grateful for the fact that you have your eyesight? Are you grateful for the fact that you had shower this morning? Are you grateful for the fact that you had lunch? Are you grateful for the fact that you can hear me? 
Are you grateful for the fact that you are, there are actually some of my students who have put like 50 things that they're grateful for every day. Now why I want you to get into this habit of being grateful, because through this you'll be able to identify opportunities. And this is an important trait for entrepreneurs. This is an, a very important thing that I would like you to, uh, to, um, you know, to, to, to develop. So I would like actually to stop here. And um, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to, uh, to answer you. If you have anything to discuss, we can also talk about that. Uh, we, will, uh, we will be hosting Datin Shahira. Her name is Datin Shahira. Uh, in the very near future, and she will be actually asking, she'll, be, she'll deliver a talk about her own experience, but the key thing is, which is a question to you and also to our students out there, is what do you think the Ministry of Education should do to make our graduates more entrepreneurial? So if you have any suggestion, please let her know, she will really appreciate it. So do you have any questions? Great, so if, they have no, if you have no question, I would like to thank you very much, and until I see you uh, next class, please take care, thanks. <laughs>